Did you know that almost 450 million pairs of jeans are sold in America alone each year? That's almost one and a half pairs per person, and that's just in America. When we think about harming the environment, we don't normally think about our clothes, but it turns out that what we wear can have a tremendous impact on the environment. Denim in particular has really come under fire in the past few years. Being such a staple in fashion worldwide, denim really builds up an enormous impact on the environment all around us. In creating this documentary, we learned a lot about denim, and we want to talk about its history, its environmental impact, and some possible solutions to help reduce our impact on the environment. Denim has had a huge impact not only on America, but on Greensboro too. Known for its versatility and durability, denim took on many tasks in America starting in the late 18th century. George Washington even visited a textile mill that produced denim. Derived from a French fabric called Sir de Denims, or Nim for short, denim is a quill fabric composed of cotton, and although it is generally known for its indigo color, denim can be any number of colors. Being a very strong and versatile fabric, denim has a wide range of applications and only became used for pants in the late 1800s. Before the late 1800s, denim was used mainly for upholstery. Now, however, it is, of course, primarily used for jeans. The history of jeans started in the mid-19th century when Jacob Davis, a tailor, partnered with Levi Strauss, a businessman who sold cloth and linens, to sell their denim pants to miners. Davis made the pants as durable as possible by reinforcing the already durable fabric with rivets and spots that were known to rip, such as the back pockets. Used mainly by workers, jeans did not enter mainstream fashion until the second half of the 20th century. Jeans first became popularized by rebellious teenagers and were even banned in some public areas because of their bad reputation. But by the 1960s, jeans became much more fashionable when manufacturers began to make different styles of jeans. Since then, denim has become a true staple in American fashion. Now that we understand the history of denim, we're going to talk more about what denim means to Greensboro specifically. Greensboro itself has been an integral part of denim's history in America. In 1922, Levi Strauss and Company, America's top jean producer at the time, began purchasing all of their denim from Cone Mills in Greensboro, North Carolina. Cone Mills soon became the primary producer of denim in America, which was crucial to the industrialization of Greensboro itself. The plant owned much of northeastern Greensboro, from houses to farms for their workers, and became very involved within the Greensboro community. The Cone name still remains prominent within the Greensboro community, with businesses like Moses Cone Hospital, which was named after the original founder, Cone Elementary, and Cone Denim Entertainment Center. However, in 2004, the Cone Mills Corporation went bankrupt due to increasing demand to outsource textiles. They continue to produce denim right here in Greensboro, but on a much smaller scale. It is important to understand that all of this denim production, although good for the local economy, does not come without taking its tolls, especially on the environment. A store in downtown Greensboro called Hudson's Hill prides themselves on selling the most durable and fashionable clothing out there. They sell a wide variety of clothing, including raw denim and other very durable fabrics. We had the pleasure of speaking with the president, William Clayton, about the store and denim in general. The first one is, can you tell us a little about your store? Sure. So, um, Hudson's Hill here, the concept behind it is to be a mainly menswear store with a focus on USA made clothing as well as locally made goods. So whether or not that's literally in Greensboro makers or regional or just around the country, we really specialize and focus on what people are doing and what craftsmanship really means and what quality really means. And um, it's, it's, been, it's been a really interesting experience to get to know all of these people who really care about their products and that's the kind of thing that we're, we're trying to portray and the kind of things we're trying to sell are things that have quality and will stand the test of time and, um, and are just really good products. All right. Um, can you tell us like what raw denim is and how it's different from what you find in like most stores? Absolutely. So, raw denim is essentially denim that is straight off of the looms. Um, Specifically, when we're talking about it in this store, it's coming from Cone Mills, and it is uh, denim that has been made on vintage machinery called Draper Looms, and um, it's selvage. So that means that the, the ends don't 
get cut, it just loops back on itself, which locks in the fibers and creates a really, really strong piece of fabric. Next, we are going to talk about denim's tremendous impact on the environment. With nearly 450 million pairs of jeans sold in America each year, the environmental impact builds up pretty fast. For a single pair of jeans to be produced, you need 1.5 pounds of cotton, which requires 1,500 gallons of water and countless numbers of pesticides. You also need huge vats of synthetic indigo and a good amount of brass for the zippers and the rivets. On a small scale, it doesn't seem like much, but when you add up all the jeans in the world, the numbers begin to look pretty staggering. The water used to produce jeans in America alone could fill 1 million Olympic-sized swimming pools, and cotton growers alone use about 16% of the world's pesticides. In addition, the synthetic indigo used to dye denim is often made from coal or oil, and in developing countries where environmental regulations are more lax, leftover dye is often dumped into nearby waterways. A study done in Tehuacan, Mexico, found lead, mercury, cadmium, and selenium in the water downstream from textile plants. Farmers in the surrounding area suffered from chemically burned plants and sterile soil. Furthermore, extracting the metals used for the hardware leads to very unhealthy air pollution and acid mine drainage, which occurs when acidic water drains from a mine into a nearby water source. Now that we understand denim's environmental impact, it's time to talk solutions. There are a number of solutions to these problems caused by our genes. First and foremost is buying organic cotton. Hand-picked organic cotton genes reduce the environmental impact by eliminating the use of harmful pesticides and oil guzzling machines. But what they don't do is reduce the amount of water necessary to produce cotton. They actually require more as organic cotton yields are about 50% less than that of cotton grown using pesticides and machines. Some people point to using bamboo as an alternative to cotton because it has no natural pests, is very fast growing, and is very water efficient. However, they disregard the slew of chemical treatments necessary to turn bamboo into a comfortable fabric, which also poses its own environmental threats. Others look to sugarcane to replace cotton, but they forget that sugarcane is also a very water-intensive crop that in addition also requires a number of chemical processes to make it into a suitable fabric. We asked William Clayton what he thought about some possible alternatives to using cotton for jeans. Here's what he had to say. Um, there are a lot of processes that go into it, and there are viable alternatives like bamboo or hemp, things like that, that are, are good as far as a fiber goes. The only difference is that the, the actual makeup of a cotton fiber, the staple of the cotton itself, is, is a very unique fiber and it's very strong and it's very durable um, and so while the answer would be yes there are alternatives there haven't really been any that have cropped up lately you know I, I think that there will be innovation in that realm along the lines of finding something that's a good replacement um, but currently currently there's not really anything out there really although cotton poses some serious environmental threats there isn't a truly good alternative as of right now. Additionally, there are many projects currently underway to reduce the water and pesticides used to grow cotton. Solutions to the use of synthetic indigo are not as simple. There is much more politics involved. Cone Denim did recently come out with a line of denim made with natural indigo, but this does not fix the issue of developing countries where the textiles dump their excess indigo into the nearby waterways. To fix this, instead of asking the countries to fix the issue, as consumers ourselves, we need to make much more conscious decisions about buying clothing, especially denim that is made in America or another country with strict environmental regulations. This will push companies not only to abide by stricter environmental regulations, but also pay more fair wages for their workers. The use of brass rivets and hardware also pose a threat to the environment via air pollution and acidic runoff. However, the solution to this one is simple. Use recycled metal. Tons of good, suitable metal is scrapped each year simply because it is not useful for its intended purpose. However, some of that metal would be very suitable to use for hardware, not only for jeans, but many other things as well. Another way to reduce the environmental impact caused by buying jeans is simply to buy used jeans. This way you can get those awesome faded jeans without destroying the environment. 
Hudson's Hill actually sells quality used jeans in their downtown store. We asked the owner, William Clayton, to tell us more about why they sell them. This kind of goes back to the question of how to how to have an, a, a good environmental impact or how to uh, or lessen it rather. Um, and if we find a good quality pair of jeans that are still have life left in them, then we don't see any reason to pass those up. And, and there are plenty of people out there who want the look and also want something that's going to be a good quality product. So. That's more or less the reason. It's just that um, you, you still uh, there's still clothes out there that can go for a long time if we let them. As consumers, we have the power to demand these changes in our clothing. We can still look cool and save the environment at the same time. We just need to push companies to make these changes and make a few changes ourselves too. Pressure from consumers has already pushed Levi's into starting the Levi's Waterless Initiative that seeks to reduce the water used to make our jeans. However, we cannot put all of the blame on these companies. As consumers, we're responsible for at least 23% of the water use and 37% of the electricity used during the lifetime of our jeans, according to a recent study. Thus, it's important to learn more about the proper care of our jeans so that we can do our part to save the environment, too. Mr. Clayton also had some tips on how to prolong the life of your genes and reduce our environmental impacts. Probably the best way that I can think to answer that question is to be, be very cognizant of um, how you wear your clothes and how you wash your clothes. So the more you wash your clothes, the more they're just going to fall apart, essentially, and the quicker they're going to fall apart. So. Some things that we wear don't need to be washed every time we wear them. You know, they can they can last a little bit longer. Um, so knowing one how often you should be washing something, a that saves on the electricity and the water that goes into doing those things and the detergents and all of that stuff. But then also, if you take into account how well the clothes are constructed, then that means they're going to last longer. Period. You know, if you don't have seams ripping apart and you don't have, have the the things you're wearing just literally falling into disarray. Um, then you're going to have them longer, you won't have to buy things as often, so there are less, less resources being spent um, to make all this clothing because the demand isn't as high. So if that makes sense, there's, there's um, kind of a twofold thing of how, how long you keep your clothing, which means how well is it made, can it be kept for a long time, and how often are you washing it, and um, and how those how those two things interact to keep your garments going for a while? Um, are there any specific techniques or things that will prolong the life of the jeans or clothing? Definitely, um, that's a great question and one we get a lot here. So, really, the best thing you can do is just hand wash your clothing, especially jeans, denim in particular. If you, um, if you just put them in the, in the bath, you know, give them a nice hot soak, uh, or you can wear them in the shower, that kind of thing, and then just hang them out to dry or put them out in the sun, then you're golden. That's a great way to do it. And that'll help keep them going for a long, long time, make sure you don't smell funky, and um, kind of accomplish everything you need to. How often should you wash your jeans? That's a topic that's very much up for debate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you'll hear all kinds of different things. And you know, even, even the reasons that I will give for how often you should are, you know, they don't work for everybody. So it's, I think it's more about knowing your own personal preferences as well as the kinds of things that you do in your jeans. You know, some people, if you wear them every day and you bike to work or you bike to school or something like that and you get super gross and sweaty, then you, know, you probably need to wash them more often because they're going to get a little bit gross. But um, if you're just you know going to work and you're sitting at your desk and that's it, then you can probably wash them every six months and be fine. You know, but really in the, the premium denim market, the raw jeans market, probably every six months would be the sweet spot. 
you know, just to give them a good hot soak or, um, you know, hand wash them, something like that, just to make sure they're fresh. And also you want to make sure that the, the cotton doesn't start to um, deteriorate as well. Because we've had some people that have brought their clothes in before, brought their jeans in for repair, and the 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 fibers like they've just gotten so gross that they're they're starting to decay and just rot and fall apart which is clearly not what you want with your pants so um so making sure that you periodically wash them you know every six months is probably a good rule of thumb a recent study showed that a pair of jeans that had been worn for 15 months without washing and a pair that had only been worn a couple of times had very few bacterial differences Many jean manufacturers have since started to advocate for washing your jeans less. Raleigh Denim, which produces jeans right here in North Carolina, puts If You Must Wash on their washing instructions, encouraging their customers to do their part and save the planet. The overarching solution to our obsession with denim cannot be simply to just buy seven pairs of some eco-friendly jeans and never wash them. We need to reduce the number of jeans we are buying and make more calculated decisions about caring for them so we can eliminate some waste. A movement on the rise currently that seeks to do just that is the raw denim movement. Raw denim is denim that has not undergone any of the usual washing and distressing processes. It comes straight off the loom and is cut and sewn into jeans and then sold to you. Raw denim is much more durable than pre-distressed denim and eliminates the use of hazardous sandblasting and enzyme washes that are both harmful to humans and the environment. Just wearing eco-friendly raw denim and washing them once a month isn't going to save our planet completely. But there isn't one solution to this environmental crisis. We need to do our part as a part of the environmental community to save the planet, and owning one pair of jeans versus seven isn't going to kill you. So when you destroy those jeans you're wearing right now, go out and find a pair of some eco-friendly raw denim that you can wear for the next six to seven years and do your part to save our planet. Thank you.